Good evening, everybody. Oh my gosh, you guys, welcome to Everything Vaguely Par Paranormal. I am so excited that I can't even talk. <laughs> I'm Shelly Pruitt, and these are my partners in the paranormal, Mr. Blake Smith and Mr. Ryan Roberts. And y'all, I have to tell you, I'm going to give myself a little pat on the back for this guy tonight. <laughs> you guys, we have got the former caretaker of the Conjuring House himself, Mr. John Huntington. And okay, if you watch Sleepless Unrest, he was in Sleepless really Unrest. Good. Yes. Uh, he has been on Fright Club and what name me some more. I mean, you name it, he's been on it. <laughs> if it has to do with the conjuring house, you have seen John Huntington. And he puts a lot of videos up on YouTube where he is like investigating. And for some reason, things really like to talk to him through a spear box. That's awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna be asking about that tonight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I am very excited about this. So should we go ahead and bring on Mr. John Hunt? Absolutely. Let's welcome him in, the former caretaker of the Conjur Conjuring House. Hi, John. How are you tonight? I'm great. I'm great. How are you? Fantastic. Oh, wonderful. Doing good. I I Doing apologize well. up front. I'm a bit of a stalker. <laughs> Do you really <laughs> investigate your own house, sir? Um. I do. Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm kind of like a spare box addict. So I do sessions like at my house. Um, I used to do it at work, but they kind of frown on it. At this <laughs> <laughs> so I don't really, I don't really do that here anymore. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I do at my house. Yeah. I mean, were you having any like adverse effects from it, from investigating your own space? I don't. Every once in a while I have something weird happen and I'm just like, Oh man, why do you guys wake me up for you know <laughs> like, like a random voice or something? And I'm just like, I just I want to go back to bed. Can you leave me alone? And then it usually stops. Wait, wait a minute. So bad. you've had something wake you up in the middle of the night, like, "Hey, John, turn on the spirit box." You're like, "Yeah, go to hell." <laughs> yeah, I've had him like wake me up saying, "John," um, because the apartment I actually live in, my uncle died in it. Oh. And I took oh, I helped him helped my aunt clean it out. And I needed to get an apartment near my mom because she has Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I called the landlord right away. I was like, can I rent the apartment? So basically I moved in right after my uncle died, which is kind of weird. But yeah, stuff kind of happens there every once in a while. Um, it could be him. It could be a spirit from all the crazy places we go to. I don't know. <laughs> so. That's why I don't investigate my own house. I like to, I, I always say I like to play in it. I'm not going to live in it. <laughs> right, yeah. Well, I, I always like to get a brand new piece of equipment and I don't investigate my own house, but I'll take it to one of my friend's house and go, Hey, let me show you my new piece of equipment. Let me show you how it works. That's what you do, John. That's messed up. <laughs> Absolutely. It is. Let me bring my demons to your house. <laughs> exactly. Cause they're tired of living with me. They should come and visit you. Yeah. Yeah. So, for a while, so. Exactly. So <laughs> let's guys, let's get to what everybody is absolutely waiting to hear about. Look John, how long house. were you the caretaker of the conjuring house? Um, I lived there for a year now. I kind of wait, you actually lived in it for a year? Yeah, sometimes oh, alone for a whoa. month or two at a time. Because the my friends, Corey and Jen, they they actually had a house in Maine too. Um so when they were gone, I would stay at the house alone, watch it, and I would do some investigations with people. Or, at the beginning of COVID, I was there alone for about two months because um, they couldn't oh. come down. So. Well, and the big yeah. balls of the night go to Mr. John. I did not spend two months alone in the Conjuring house. Right. Well, listen. Mean all you need is a weighted blanket and some like earplugs and you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that would cut it for me. Uh, I don't did, know. <laughs> did you find that it acted up more when you were by yourself or when other people were there? Um, it, It's strange because they really wouldn't mess with me too much unless I was looking for it. I mean, a few things that happened where, it, you know, caught me off guard, but most of the time it was like, uh, I kind of like build up a relationship kind of understanding with them. It seemed like um, okay. some groups came in, they would get crazy stuff. Other groups came in and nothing would happen at all. Um, I've had some groups come in and I investigate with them. And before they come in, I'm like talking out loud. I'm like, okay guys, let's scare the crap. out of these guys. <laughs> Oh, you asking for them to have 
you know what? That's got to be fun for you to get with the spirits and go, hey, listen, if you can get somebody to wet your pants, guess what? Extra spirit box session tomorrow, you know? <laughs> yeah. That I, sounds I very like, devious. I remember one group coming in and um, they they had the dowsing rods out and stuff. And I was like, well, let's do an AVP session. And we did an AVP session. And we were getting like these crazy things like, we asked like who was there and it was like every demon and and all these crazy things on a voice recorder and the the girl that was there was like yeah she called like a friend up to come pick her up like she was <laughs> she was like out her, yeah her friends kind of braved it but she was just gone after she heard that her face was like pale and she's just like no this, this is real so i'm out of here <laughs> so <laughs> you know so in, in in investigating with these people, have you turned some skeptics into believers? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I've seen it. I've met so many different groups from everywhere there. and um, I mean, I've seen it all. I've seen people like fake getting scratched, like color on camera and stuff like that. Oh, you know, I won't, I won't name names, but I've seen like everything at the house when I stayed there. So. Yeah. So, for this is going to be impossible, I think. But go for ahead, our, Blake. He's our viewers, no, oh no, I would say it for our viewers and listeners that may not know what the Conjuring House is. <laughs> in your own words, kind of since since you were a former character, give us a little bit of brief overview of the Conjuring House. So, in case there is somebody, we can get them caught up. Well, the house it's a house in Rhode Island that was made famous by the 2013 movie The Conjuring, from when the parents uh, lived there parent family um and they experienced a uh, crazy paranormal activity and they had um uh, they had another group come in first it was like carl uh, i can't remember his last name he has a twin brother they came investigated first had some crazy things happen and then lorraine uh warren uh, lorraine and Ed warren came and investigated and um the house the house itself was started being built in 1680 and Damn. finished in 1736 wow. so that was before even <clears throat> even independence you know america's independence yeah yeah um yeah it's like a brief history of it but uh, it's and i know so sorry, I didn't mean to, no, yeah, okay. I didn't mean to I'm sorry <laughs> um I know, I know that it's i mean and it has set through king phillips war revolutionary war civil war uh mm -hmm. i know i know that there is a lot of that region with the king's philip wars is why that they say the paranormal activity uh is so rampant up there because per capita that was like the bloodiest war that america has ever had was the king phillips war um so just to kind of tell you what the land is like that it's sitting on <laughs> the land is a... i think they Actually... wiped out a whole native american tribe the mm -hmm. wow like, completely wiped it out Mm. So. Mm. That's, so so how did you so being the caretaker how did you come about getting that job exactly i know you said they were friends of yours but you don't want that job brian no i, I want <laughs> yeah i want no i want insider information come on let me let me have it <laughs> so i i was friend uh i started investigating like i don't know 10 years ago and I had posted some videos. There's a house, this apartment I lived in that was pretty active because a little girl was, there's a book about it. A little girl was put in an oven and she was burned to death. Her dad thought wow. she was, she thought, he thought that she was possessed by the devil. And um, anyways, I started posting videos about what I was experiencing. And um, this lady, Brenda from Graves Paranormal messaged me and she wanted me to come up. She wanted me to meet Corey because he had similar kind of spare box techniques and stuff like that. We wanted, wanted to work together. So we mm -hmm. so went up and met Corey and uh, we hit it off really well. Um, and we started investigating together and we started traveling around, investigating. And it became like this big addiction for both of us. Um, and we just, we were like, just we're like brothers for a long time, for, for years. And um, I know Ghost Adventures was filming, um, filming down there and he wanted to know if I wanted to come down while they're there. And I was like, sure, you know, I'd like to uh, meet everybody and everything. So I came down and I kept coming down every weekend. And finally he's like, um, you know, 
I was kind of in between places. And he's like, well, I kind of need somebody to watch the house. Um, and if you want to stay here, you can, because I didn't really have, I didn't really have a place to go, to be honest, at the time. Yeah. So, so I was like, yeah, I guess I'll, you know, I'll stay at the Gondra house. So I guess I'll do that. So that's how, <laughs> how I didn't really, I wasn't really a caretaker per se. I was just kind of staying there. Like, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? I didn't get like paid for it or anything like that. I was just, just a place to hang out and, and uh, I mean, we had investigated forever, so he knew that I could get stuff in Spurbox and would also help with the business and stuff like that. That's basically how it happened. I would love that conundrum for myself. Need a place to go, be homeless, or, oh, darn, I guess I got to go stay at the Conjuring house. <laughs> <laughs> Crap. <laughs> that would be like. I don't know. That'd be a dream <laughs> for right, me. Yeah. I didn't argue with it. So. <laughs> yeah. You're like, well, yeah, I mean, sure. I'm just hanging out here with how, God knows how many spirits, but at least there's a roof over my head. You know I mean? <laughs> that's, shoot, that, that, that's all you, buddy. Cause I mean, I, I don't want to live with them. I just want to go. I want to go talk to them every once in a while and keep them where they're at. I don't want to say like you already live with one and you don't like it. I do, and I, I don't I don't like him, but but you know what? Uh, I say I don't want to live in it, but secretly I'm trying to find me a haunted house to buy. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> so John, how many different different shows have you uh been a part of? Uh we know Ghost Adventures, we know uh Sleepless Unrest, we know Fright Club. What are what are some of the other ones that you've been a part of? Because I know the list is very long, but anybody that's that's watching and wants to go see you on one of these shows. Where, what is another, I, I, those are three. I know there's more. Um, there's a haunting in Harrisville. I don't know if you've seen that. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think. <laughs> I, I'm on like, a, I do a lot of stuff with exploring with Josh. On, uh, oh, okay. Nice. I'm sorry. What was it again? Can you say it again for me? Exploring with Josh. He does um, oh. beyond the dark episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, I met him at the Conjuring House, and um, I'm taking and, notes so I can stalk you further. <laughs> <laughs> at after, least I'm honest about it. After he investigated there, he's like, "I didn't even know who he was. Like, I didn't know he was like some huge YouTuber or anything." Mm-hmm. Just Corey asked me to investigate with him. He needed the help. He 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 just started out investigating us, investigating. So afterwards, uh, Josh is like, "Do you want to do more? Do you want to?" investigate more than like, yeah sure you know and then uh so we go to like wilson castle and then we start traveling around i think i think we did like 18 different episodes and uh wow. like i didn't even realize like the guy has like a statue of him over in like the uk or something like he's what <laughs> yeah he's like so i don't even think of him like that like, it's really weird like knowing yeah. that he <laughs> knowing that he has like four million subscribers or something like yeah yeah, wow. he's, he's got a bunch. Yeah, he's got a bunch, and his videos are actually really cool. Um, and did so you I, ask I him exactly when your about. statue was going to be placed, and should you be there for the ceremony? Right, that would be. <laughs> I would. I'd ask that you that. <laughs> yeah, you let me know. We'll start a petition. <laughs> so I, I know how much you like. Is the spirit box your favorite way to communicate? It seems to, in like the videos I've I've seen you put up and everything. Is that your favorite way to communicate? Is the spirit box? Um, I like, I mean, I like EVPs. Like, you can't beat an EVP, like, when it's super clear and, and class A. and it, it just hits you differently. Spirit box, I've done this so many things. Um, mm-hmm. But it's like nothing beats a good EVP or a voice. A voice. As far as devices, yeah, definitely uh, EVPs. But I do spirit. Lo- I'm known for spirit box stuff. A lot of groups um, want me to do that for, for them. So, so let's talk about a spirit box real quick because I've got a question that I am burning to ask you. What the hell was going through your mind whenever them spirits were leading you down the path, telling you left, right, and straight back to the uh, cemetery and the foundation? That was freaking wild. Oh, and sleepless unrest. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I woke up in the morning and I, I wanted I wanted to find this old mansion that nobody's been able to find. Like Andrea's trying to tell us where it is, and we just never could find it. And she said that's where she met the spirits, and that brought something back with her after she went to this place so i'm like I... so i'm walking through the woods looking for it and i had a spare box in my backpack and it came on like i, I might have hit it or something it came on as well 
I'll try. I'll try to see if they'll tell me where to go. So I'm walking through the woods, left, left, right, straight. Like I just kept walking. And it's funny because when I came to one section, it told me to go straight. And I'm like, I can't go straight. There's all kinds of crap here. So then it said, if I would have went straight, I would have came out in the exact location it directed me around it. <laughs> wow. Oh, shut up. Really? No way. Yeah. Yeah, oh, so. that's cool. Oh, so it's like it's all it, yeah, it's all the crap, it's all the crap in your path, and it was like, okay, never mind, I'll take him around. Hold on one second. <laughs> yeah, that was that's pretty, pretty badass. Yeah, because that's I mean, not... oh, sorry, you, go ahead. That's fine. Uh, uh, you you hear it in Sleepless Unrest for those who want to go watch it. Um, I believe that that's streaming right now on Tubi. If you've got that, uh, I think it's on a couple of other locations on Amazon Prime as well. Really good and well done documentary. But man, that part where you're being led through the woods that's just freaking wild because the answers are so crystal clear there's no yeah there's no doubt no absolutely yeah they they left so much out of that movie though like really oh tell us what they left out (laughs) well i was doing um box with uh brian and michelle and um the rest of the group and um trying to think of i can't even remember (laughs) feel so bad i haven't talked to him in a while but um i can't remember the spanish name that he's named this now but anyways i was getting like vera vera that's what it was. yeah i was gonna say i think it was vera so i was getting so much crazy stuff on this vera kept calling me magic boy throughout the whole time she'd be like come on magic <laughs> boy grab your spear <laughs> <laughs> and uh there was one point we we're filming and i'm in the library and i'm doing spare box and on the SLS, it's like a small, it looks like a small kid, like four or five standing next to me. And all of a sudden, his voice starts coming through the spirit box of a, of a child that matches standing right next to the spirit box, like talking, looks like, he, like, like he's right by it, like talking into it. And he's answering mm-hmm. like just about everything I said. Like how many fingers up am I holding up? He'd be like, there, he wouldn't say two. He'd be like, there is two. Like he would just, oh, he shit. Was like, hmm. Just nonstop, and uh, yeah. They, so you, they so you were, up. you were getting the answers from the spirit box, but on the SLS, he was standing. The figure was right next to it. Yeah, right next to me, like a child. Oh, that's that's wild. Wow. And, and I mean, it's been a while, so I don't remember everything. But there was a lot of. I was like, I was so looking forward to them calling me Magic Boy on video, but never. <laughs> 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 but they got it so, all. Right. What we would can you make say? Make that happen, John. <laughs> <laughs> so, what would you say was the most, the most shocking piece of information that you've gotten out of the spirit box while you're in the Conjuring House? Shocking information. God, so many things. It's hard. To I was gonna say it's on. probably probably gotten so damn much that it all comes <laughs> together. I know there was one spirit there. Um, the first night, I even did a spirit box is with Kyler with. Uh, with Jen and Corey's son. And uh, the first night we did it, there was a guy just swear, like swearing like crazy, just at, 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 like yeah. over and over and over again. And then after that, just about every time I would ask him to, he would say it. He would say the F word every time. <laughs> so he would just scream out, fuck, for no reason? You can yeah. say it. We're an A tuned up podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's my kind of spirit right there. Be like, say it again. Come on, say it again. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, was I, was I on the spirit box? Shit. <laughs> Were you talking, Ryan? Was that you? <laughs> yeah, that might have been me. So have you ever gotten what you consider to be a legitimate name of a demon that has come through the spirit box to try and speak with you? Um, I, I have them say they're demons quite a bit, um, but I never had like a name that matched up. Like I never never try to get i don't don't know demons names i i don't either (laughs) but i guarantee you with what you've posted up had you gotten a legitimate name of a demon there would have been someone contacting you going hey this is like the demon from the seventh realm of the 11th level of something else (laughs) they would have contacted you and let you know yeah so what do you think actually haunts the conjuring house because obviously something does what do you actually think it is um, I think a 
a lot of it, I think there's a few spirits that are there. I know there's some buried by the law out back. They've actually brought ground penetrating radar and there's like five unmarked graves by the wall up back. Um, but I believe it's some of the Arnolds are still there. I get that. I used to get uh, John Arnold a lot. Um, can you still see me okay? <laughs> we can't see you at all, but we can hear you just fine. You do oh, whatever okay. makes you happy. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Um, what was the question again? Wait, but you said you, had, you said the the Arnolds were buried out back, and we were we were asking exactly what do you think it is that haunts the Conjuring House? Um, I I think it's kind of like where they have so many people that investigate there. I think a lot of it is just like people bringing their own attachments, ah, or mm-hmm. their own spirits with them, because it's it was always most of the time it was always somebody different there. Just about. Mm-hmm. Um, I would get a woman a lot, the same woman. I can't remember her name exactly. Um, it was like the same one that used to mess with uh, with somebody in the basement. Was that Bathsheba? Is that her name? No, it wasn't. It wasn't Bathsheba. But... <laughs> I think that's what the name was. Yeah, there, there. So the rumor is is that uh, Bathsheba is supposed to haunt there because uh, she was an. Uh, I believe she was actually a neighboring woman that uh an infant child died in her care and when the body was looked over there was a, a puncture wound at the base of the skull that said it was about the size of a large sewing needle and knitting they needle, right kn- a knitting needle or a sewing needle something along that lines uh mm-hmm. so they claimed that she had done it and she was labeled as a witch uh and that she had sacrificed the infant in the name of the devil basically or to the devil um and that supposedly is that's the lore. I don't believe there's any um, actual mm-hmm. documentation yeah, yeah. except for the fact there actually was a woman named Bathsheba who lived in that area at the yeah, time. She, well, and she was a neighbor too. Mm-hmm. So there right. is some, a little bit of validity to it, but yeah. John, have you ever gotten any um, native American uh, things that have come through the spirit box for you? Uh Oh, John. Did we lose him? If we lost him, you know what? Y'all keep talking. I'm gonna go get him. Okay, go get him. Be right back. You go, go get him. You go. You go. You, you go, go get, get him. him. <laughs> <laughs> she gonna go get him. Yeah. Oh, here. You know what? She just went to go get him, and there he is. <laughs> oh. oh no! <laughs> Shelly, come, come back. back. She's <laughs> coming back. It's all right. No, we were just we were kind of talking about um we were kind of talking about uh Bathsheba the the lore and legend of Bathsheba that that she supposedly is the dark entity that that is said to haunt there because she was a, a lady who was classified as a witch. And because supposedly lore and legend, I, I believe there's a little bit of validity to it that an infant child died in her care and that they blamed it on her because mm-hmm. she was sacrificing it to the devil. So, um, but my, I, it's kind of along the same lines. Do you believe that the hauntings that are happening there are along a darker or more negative Or do you think it is just the combination of everybody showing up? Um, I think it's, um, I think it's a different kind of haunt. I think it, what happened to me was it kind of wore me down, um, uh, wore me down mentally, made me push all my friends away, kind of changed me in a way. Oh. And uh, Mm -hmm. that happened to Corey as well. It happened to Bill that stayed there. It, made us all like just if we were there too long it'd make us all kind of different kind of it's kind of like a weird attachment almost not like a possession but um i wasn't myself for sure um, mm-hmm. and and uh cory cory had noticed that and uh that's basically why i left was because he's like you need to i don't want to i don't want to show up and, and you'd be hanging from a tree all mm, okay wow you know, so he's like, maybe this isn't a, this isn't forever. He said, but this you might need a break. And I'm like, so kind of, kind of almost is not maybe a possession, but an oppression. Like it was very yeah. oppressive to you. I could understand that. Yeah, that's yeah. hmm. So would you become, yeah, like like what what you just said? Would you become depressed? Would you become like easier to anger? Like what exactly? How would you change? In what way? Um, I would become depressed. Um, 
angry and I would think like everybody was just out to get me. If there was like, if there was groups there, I would feel like they were in my house and I didn't really want them mm. to be there. Ooh. Things like that. Um, mm-hmm. And I'd have really bad, bad dreams and stuff like that. Like, yeah. It was, uh, Do you feel comfortable telling us kind of what those dreams were like? You don't have to tell us a specific <laughs> dream. But when we say bad, sorry, just I went bad dark dreams. real fast. <laughs> No, that's 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 fine. <laughs> no, no, no. This is interesting because uh, we 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 investigate haunted locations as well, and we have left locations and had like really fakakta dreams, and so we're that's that's why it's very interesting to hear someone who and I don't know why I thought you wouldn't. I just think he doesn't want to talk to me. Um, <laughs> I, do, I do. I'm sorry. Can you still hear me? Yeah, we can yes. still hear you. <laughs> and I would I'm think a, that I'm around I, a bunch of cement, so it's probably ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Okay, I'm gonna use the old cement excuse. I, I was just yeah. wondering, kind of what the what the like how how often would that occur? Would it occur after you'd been there a certain amount of time, or after groups were there, or after you were there by yourself? Was there any kind of pattern to it? It was pretty random. Um, I didn't really notice it at first. Like I had to have somebody actually come out and say, like, you know, you're different. You're you're not yourself. You're not acting yourself. Um, I kind of started noticing it. Like I would feel uh, like I'd be one morning, I'd be sitting there eating, eating my cereal and I'd start crying for like no apparent reason. Just, oh, like, wow. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just like emotions were just really strange. Like we were doing, um, we did one, we did this big live stream event uh, for like a week and second one we did a year later is when I kind of had this attachment and uh, I can remember not wanting to do it at all like I love doing that stuff and I didn't want to do it at all I didn't want to be part of it and I was like I was in there like just like crying and Jed's like Jed Hines is like what do you want I'm like what's wrong it's like do you want to go home like what do you, do you want to go to Maine like do you still want to be here and I'm just like I don't know I'm like it'll pass but I'm just it's just emotions would come in and I wouldn't know where they were coming from. Um, hmm. That's, that's got to be yeah, a little that, scary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll vouch for it. I've experienced that. Uh, emotions that are not your own. That's not fun. And that, that definitely is along the lines of something that's maybe a little bit more oppressive. Um, did, did, did you ever feel like you were taking on the persona of someone else? Like, like do you have like flashes of someone else in your head maybe that it could have been? Does that make sense? Um, I don't think. I think I was feeling what others were feeling there. Mm-hmm. That's what mm-hmm. it felt like. Like I would get whatever emotions these things were feeling. I would. They would. Uh, I would feel it. And I don't so, know why I'm telling course, you guys. I haven't told anybody else. <laughs> I love it. So people, you know what? You're safe with us. We won't yes. tell anybody. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's so, our little secret. Nobody so, will know. So, John, that leads me to another question. Do do you have abilities? Because I, I think everybody on the screen that right now has some sort of ability, whether they know how to use it or not. Do you have an ability that, that you would claim or that you think you might be, you might be uh, leaning towards one way or another? Because they obviously well, like to talk to you. Yeah, I mean, I've worked with a lot of, um, psychics and stuff like that that would have me do events with them and things just because I was good at spare box and bringing them in um, I feel like I might have some kind of ability I mean I can feel the connection like when the spare box starts working really well I can feel that connection I can I can tell like from the start if I'm going to get if I'm not going to get anything I can tell like um so a lot of people have said I have abilities, but I'm not sure exactly what they are. Well, just from watching some of those videos, I would think that you do. And so do you think you're a beacon that maybe whenever you open up and start talking to them, they're like, oh, hey, John's back. I'm going to go talk to John. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think I've been doing it so long. I think they trust trust me as well to talk to me. I think you have to build up like a trust with them. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I would very much agree with that. Yeah. Go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, and I. Mm-hmm. Oh no, no, no. Go ahead. 
I was I was just gonna say I can I can understand what kind of what you're saying. That's along the lines of I mean these two have been with me on an investigation when I've just been like, guys, there's nothing. Like there's nothing, you know. And it's like we won't get anything. Like if I'm like there's nothing, we just won't get anything. But if I'm like I'm just feeling kind of off or whatever, it's usually the night when shit starts going sideways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, whenever. So you you so you kind of get the same thing, John. You have an idea whenever shit's gonna go sideways or things are gonna pop off. You kind of know. Yeah, I kind of know, um, especially with, for some reason, with Josh's group. I don't know what it is, but when we all investigate together, we just get the craziest stuff. And I, I know every time I go with them, stuff's going to happen. Um, and I think I think it has to do with our group is so wide range in age and experiences. Like he's like Seth on the group. He's cinematic Seth. He's like 21. And then you get Josh, who's like 29, and then I'm 45, and then you got Joe Rainoni, who's 55, 56. So when we come together, it's it's crazy, uh, and I know I know we're gonna get stuff. I can feel it like every time we go to a place, <laughs> like it's it's wild. Wow. Well, you you got a lot of different people at different ages with different diverse backgrounds at that point, so that I think that's attractive to the other you side. Yeah, you kind of offer a, a, an age range that's appealing to pretty much anybody in the spirit world that, you know, at least in my opinion, you know. So I have a question for you, though, at the beginning of Sleepless Sunrest when they showed a uh, clip that you had captured, um, because we've had an experience with this as well. Uh, whenever you were in there, there, I think it was like the TV had turned off or something. You were hearing something and and the door you turn towards the door and you were like, you're out there or something. And that door just goes and just slams shut. What the fuck was that like in the con <laughs> in the conjuring house in the freaking conjuring? We've had it happen in a museum. I can't imagine the conjuring. <laughs> right. <laughs> I had to shit so, my pants. <laughs> so basically I was sitting on the couch watching porn on the big screen. Uh, <laughs> John, run with that. That is fantastic. Say that every time. That is awesome. That is the best answer. Yes, that is the best thing everywhere. So continue on with your I think they were angry family. about that. No, no, no. So you're sitting on the couch watching porn. Then, then what happened? Well, I finished. And then... Uh, <laughs> you were going to clean up. And then what happened? Oh, the TV, shit. <laughs> the TV turned off. I got off. John laughing. <laughs> the TV turned off. And then... Uh, and I knew so I knew something was gonna happen, like so I always grab my phone if I knew something was gonna happen. And I heard like um you kinda of see the was behind the door. Uh, so I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. I I paused on it, then it just like slammed shut on me. <laughs> like I don't really react much and I was just like, Oh, that was you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you just did that video. You just like, oh, oh okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, and in the Conjuring house, a door slams on me. I'd be like, fuck. Scooby, do it the fuck out of there. You ain't lying, man. <laughs> grab my grab my porn DVDs and get the fuck out. That's right. <laughs> DVDs. Yes, DVDs. What do you mean DVDs? This is 2022. DVDs. Right. I bet the Conjuring oh, House God. doesn't get internet. John, do you have to have DVDs at the Conjuring House? <laughs> no, they had internet. They had really nice TVs. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, Blake, you and your DVDs. You All right, well, then fine. then fine. Sign out of my porn of a subscription and get the fucking road. <laughs> <laughs> John's like, on my list next, started OnlyFans page <laughs> from the Conjuring I, House. I tried to get I tried to get Corey and Jen to do that, but they were like, no, you can't do that. Watch Porn and OnlyFans page. <laughs> An OnlyFans page. Because there was like this, uh, there was this place that felt this uh, TV show that filmed there, and there was this lady named Jennifer. She was on uh, Stranger Things. And we're all uh -huh. sitting on the couch. <laughs> we're all sitting on the couch. And she looks, she, she looks at Corey and Jen and says, have you guys ever, you know, thought about doing porn here? I think it would do really well. <laughs> Oh, I, like, I, I just lost it. Like, I thought it was the funniest shit ever. <laughs> <laughs> just, just print up t-shirts. John, and say, I that's got not a bad idea. <laughs> it's not. I'm, I'm babes, thinking marketing here. <laughs> babes and yeah. Bathsheba, triple X. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, now I'm going to be haunted by Bessie. I am thinking Sorry, of Bessie, uh, but... all kinds of dirty names come into the com into the conjuring house. <laughs> oh my god! What are y'all oh, thinking? C O M E. What are y'all thinking? Come in. <laughs> I'm inviting you into uh -huh. the conjuring house. Y'all uh -huh. are dirty. Y'all get. Uh -huh. You know what? You're going to hell for that. I wasn't as dirty. You were. <laughs> John's like, I am so glad I'm not on the screen and nobody can see me at the moment. Right. John, John is no, like, distance, no. distance, distance. He's, he's sitting over there going, fuck, I, I said yes to this interview request. He got, he's <laughs> thinking, he's in, and I'm he goes, never accept. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, never accept uh, an interview request from some weirdo on Facebook that stalks you constantly. Um, I I'll seriously. One thing that I, they, don't, they don't like in the Conjuring house. What's that? Is when you're when you're doing the the dirty, um, really, I've had them like slam doors in the middle. Of it. Really? <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Well, well, well they, they want your attention. They don't want you to pay attention to nobody else. <laughs> that's oh all no! I, you I know what? Like, Why do you? Like... You know? Well, wait, wait, wait. Maybe they're not slamming doors because they're angry. That's maybe people coming in going, "Hey, the show's on," and they're coming in. They're not going out. <laughs> See, I'd be I'd be over there challenging, and I was like, "Oh, you want to slam stuff and make noise? Yeah, keep pace with me." Just. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, wow how did we get on this behind the scenes know, of the conjuring house fun, you guys. <laughs> that's a conjuring that, house burst right there. No, that's I, a, that, I'm telling I, you. I, I, I guarantee you when our viewers and listeners clicked on this one to watch her listen to this they were not, not they were expecting, expecting this. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's fun about us you never know what you're gonna get we had dave Glid uh glidden uh playing a game with us that was his game we're like you go ahead and host for a few minutes we want to play the game <laughs> so uh yeah uh i think that that you know what damn they're on to something porn in the conjuring house <laughs> would make you a lot of money i bet it could <laughs> so so John Look, see you can see my my business mind going <laughs> <laughs> So back to the hauntings. Little, 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 guy, little, little guy with a green visor and an ad machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so John, is there any particular entity at the Conjuring House that you really don't want to run into? <laughs> Naked or otherwise. <laughs> right. Um, I think whatever was uh, suppressing us or whatever, whatever that is, something you don't want to really. Mm -hmm. deal with um uh, that's it that's i mean i've there was a woman spirit there too that would actually i have a video of her like she actually says hello out loud like um whoa and i know when chip coffee was there he said there was a woman upstairs or something that he saw psychically and hmm. around the same time i got the, uh, the girl talking out loud so. really yeah like I was there when Kindred Spirits was there. I just uh, actually signed papers to be on the show, and then I, I waited. I was waiting for like three days, and I'm just like, "All right, I'm out. Everybody, move their car. I'm going back to Maine." <laughs> like, <it's> like, <laughs> how, so how how long were they there filming while you were that there? That was exactly my question. So whenever they come to film these things, where they say they're in 24 hour lockdown, we all know it's not 24 Ooh. hours. How long are they generally? Gen generally there i think they were there for three days ghost adventures um they were there for a week but they they only hunt ghost hunted like two nights they, mm. the, the time you see on the show is actually the time they ghost hunted it was like two different nights cool. the whole other time is just doing the filming of like you know the beginning and, uh, the b-roll yeah oh, all the b-roll and the outtake yeah the mm -hmm. okay yeah, I mean, you got to. If I had a week yeah. at the Conjuring House, I would be investigating every freaking night because I'm sure something different happens every night. Mm -hmm. John, have you ever been physically harmed at the Conjuring House? Uh, no, nothing physical. No. A lot of okay. people, a lot of people that go that went there ghost hunting said, you know, they had feelings or they got touched or it's hard to prove. You know, I. Mm -hmm. I've, I felt like light touches and stuff like that here and there. Um, things tried, I've had them try to touch me out sleeping, but nothing 
Nothing. I that was say. that freaky ghost. I was gonna say that's the one yeah. trying to start that OnlyFans. That's that's, that's right. Ghost <laughs> <laughs> gone wild. Ghost <laughs> gone wild. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We need some bow chicka bow down down. What's going on right now? Or or the little air horn. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's it's old magic boy John over there. Hey, see you inadvertently got your porn name. Yeah. Didn't even realize it. Get your hands in the air. <laughs> John's yeah, yeah, like boy. F. Never again. Never again. Never again. <laughs> So what was what was the most scared you were when you were staying there? Oh, that's a good question, Ryan. Only time I was ever scared was when you know Corey was mad at me. I was scared if you, <laughs> 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 you know, because hmm. but no, ghost wise, um, I never really was scared because I was always looking for it. You know, mm -hmm. was, but stuff messes you when you're sleeping. Though that I don't like that. I'm scared. Mm -hmm. so, but was know, there? I, was it was there like never anything that like absolutely just like startled you like you were like i know you were looking for it and you were expecting it but like it just made you jump because it came from out of nowhere um, i mean the door slam made me jump a little bit but it was i was kind of kind of expecting something to happen because i could hear it but, mm -hmm. uh, uh, when i heard the girl's uh voice out loud that made me stop my tracks so. uh, yeah so i think, I, yeah, I, think I was even live streaming when that happened it was weird and then um, does, I did at one point I did want to I did want to leave because um, I have a video of this too like I was setting up stuff I was going to do a little investigation during the day and I heard like um, what's it? oh I heard some noises upstairs and I heard something run across the, the upstairs uh, top floor and I'm just like oh my god like it was loud like I thought what is it like some animal just like running loose <laughs> upstairs or Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, if somebody's up there, can you knock twice? And it, it bangs twice on the floor right above me. And I'm the only one in the house. I check the camera. There's nobody there. And um, I'm like, do I go upstairs and look? Like I'm, just, I'm like, I don't know if I want to go see what that was. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, uh, that would be the hardest part about being in there alone is like something would happen and you'd hear something. You're like, you know what? I think that's what that was. I think I'm comfortable right here. I don't have to go look. I'm good. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm good. Back in the Wait, did you go yeah. look though? <laughs> yeah, I did. I filmed. Did you go look? The stairs and yeah, just nothing. Didn't see anything. Nothing there. Which I was kind of happy. About, right? <laughs> <laughs> But then at the same time, you start questioning. You're like, wait, shit, nothing's here. What the fuck was that? Right. I was just glad I captured it. And I had I had the evidence of the girl talking for the longest time. I just didn't I didn't want to show it because I was like, I guess nobody's going to believe me. So I showed Corey it. And he's like, why? He's like, why didn't you show that? I was like, I don't know. I just, I just, it was so clear. Like, <laughs> he was like, just put it up. It's okay, you know? You're in the Conjuring house. Everybody's going to believe. I mean, God, there's so much lore and legend I would around not it. Everybody, doubt you can anything. <laughs> you could be they like a pink elephant. A pink elephant floated through the room, and I, you know, <laughs> what? Oh my God! It just happens every day. <laughs> That's right. Now, I, I do have a question for you, uh, specifically about sleepless unrest. And I know that you were in the room at that moment where there was that loud bang of the door being closed, and everybody looks over to, I believe, their right, and. Then on the left side of that door, there is something that comes up. You can physically see something come into that door and back out. Which direction were you looking whenever that happened? Were you looking well, towards that kitchen or were you looking to the right with everybody else? I, I think I looked over to the left because the bang first came over to the other, the other door. And then it came over to the door from behind us and did a bang. And then the door opened right up and then it, it felt like something just like came right into the room with us all at once. Like it happened so fast, I was just looking all around, like didn't couldn't figure out where it came from at first. It was just right, but in that footage forward. in Sleepless Unrest, the door that the entity came up to didn't. That wasn't the door that opened. Everybody looked to the right, and and I think y'all said that was the door that opened because that was where the big bang came from, and then that. Uh, I watched that thing back probably 30 times going, that has got, yeah, that's got to be. Hold on, wait, because they went out that side door that was right there by the kitchen and the door had swung open to the outside. 
So mm. it, that to that one outside. that was closed had had mm -hmm. open, but that's what they were explaining, and that's what John had just said was it was just weird because it had knocked and then knocked so quickly. It just makes right. sense, and um, almost like it diverted their attention away from what was happening at the door. Right. right. You know. So whenever you saw that piece of footage, what did you think about that? Whenever you saw whatever that was manifest itself in the window and go away. I don't remember that seeing that part. In the video. <laughs> yeah, I've only watched it one time, so I don't remember seeing anything. Like, oh, child, I've watched it at least six or seven. I've got, I've got to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Shelly says opinion. she sees. Look, this is just me. I'm going to speak on my opinion. Shelly says she sees something. I don't see anything. I think it's the curtain that was on the door that that I'm seeing. That I'm like, okay, I could. But I don't know. Shelly says she sees something. I have. I've watched it only like it maybe. Goes two, up. Two and I was going to say. Away. It looked like something to me too. So. Thank you, Ryan. It does mm -hmm. because there is nothing in that window, and then I'm there not, is, and then it's gone. Damn, and I'm it's not, on, the yeah, on the outside of the door. Yes, on the outside, on the back door. That's not it. And, and it's shit. Like, it, okay, it's, it's not like it's ain't there. I'm just saying. No, no, I'm I saying, didn't see it. It's, it's right. It's right before they go out. And they we have we the get passionate, doors. John. <laughs> Fucking we get passionate over here. <laughs> <laughs> You're all right, Blake. I knew we were gonna argue with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you What'd come you say, John? We... I missed that. <laughs> He, he said, that's probably the best podcast I've been on. Like, <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thanks, man. We sure do appreciate Not that. Not to put We're down not... anybody else. But... <laughs> <laughs> we come on here. We don't talk about just hauntings and ghosts. We talk about porn and OnlyFans, too. It's all good. <laughs> that's right. Hey, hey, John, at the end of the day, we want to have fun no matter what. And we want you to want to come back. I know we probably already shot a hole in that. But, you know, <laughs> no, definitely not. we want you to want to come, come back, back at some I mean... point. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, I have... I have another question. What do you, have you ever gone and explored those woods outside and around the conjuring house? Have you ever gone and explored those woods just by your lonesome or with a group? It doesn't matter. Yeah. I used to go all the time. I used to go out there just to, because there was like tons of blueberries and raspberries and animals and ticks. A lot of ticks. <laughs> <laughs> He said ticks Wait. with a with a T, people. Ticks with a T. Oh, yeah. with a T. Yeah. I they thought he everywhere. said something else. We go, here we go, back to the only things again. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't go out there hunting any spooky things? Um, just that just that one time uh, with the spare box. I went out there with Josh a few times. Um I don't we didn't really film much out there. I know, I wish I would have done more out in the woods, but like I said, it's Hicks galore, like it's ridiculous. Wow. So, um, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no. I was gonna say. So this is gonna take a little bit of a left turn, but it's it's along the same lines of the woods. So in the documentary, when they're in the woods, you start hearing a lot of tree knocking, like something knocking on trees out there. Um. I know that's they, they didn't really go into it, but I know that's synonymous with like a lot of Bigfoot activity. Have you ever had like any of that sort of activity out there? Um, the tree knocking scene in that area they were at, there's always trees banging against each other, right, right in that area. To be honest, um, mm -hmm. when I first saw it, I was like, "Oh, that's the uh, I know those trees. It's like the trees down by where the bridge crosses. It, they're always like knocking against each other." Oh, okay. so you've heard this before? Yeah, yeah, I've heard it before. No, I wouldn't say it's not paranormal. I've heard it, and it was banging into each other. I mean, it was. I don't know what was... kind of trees you got up there, but our trees don't bump into each other like that. <laughs> trees back there are a mess everywhere. Oh my goodness! Falling down and. I, I just thought it, I thought it was interesting because it was almost like it was answering them, like you know, yeah, like yeah, they was. they would do it and then it would do it and then they would do it and it would do it and that that was I'm, I'm sitting over here watching this documentary going, God damn, Conjuring House got ghosts, Big demons, foot Bigfoot. I mean, what's next? <laughs> UFO, a UFO landed in the backyard. Like what's fuck? Like, you know? Well, uh, you know, too they had the they had the. Nope, nope. we're not going to hear that. <laughs> That's all right. Oh. Man, so we're having all kinds of difficulties. They, they, they had the balls of light and flashes that oh, yeah. they could see in the woods. Uh -huh. um, John, had, did you ever see any like light, just random light flashes out there? Uh, once in a while, it is that there's no road like back there for miles. I had 
see some flashes. I used to camp out back. I used to pitch a tent out back there. And just, you know, especially with this. Stop it, Shelly. Jesus Christ, Shelly. I... <laughs> you're like fucking, you're like a damn 12 year old right now. Shit. <laughs> Just pitching a tent the on the, the conjuring house. <laughs> <laughs> John, you brought up. The... I know, you conjured up more spirits. That's, oh, that's John's new tagline. Conj, you should put that on your, on your uh, YouTube. Conjuring up more than spirits. <laughs> my magic oh, I'm writing that down <laughs> in fact we may, we may steal that <laughs> it's, it's so funny like I uh, people were asking me is it haunted out back and I was live streaming at the time out back and I was like I don't know, really know then I heard like a giggle out loud and everybody heard it and I was like oh okay maybe it is <laughs> maybe. <laughs> does that answer your question <laughs> It's almost yeah. like they were they were listening. They were like, "Oh, you don't think yeah. we're haunted?" Yeah. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Maybe so, it is so haunted. How long were you actually the caretaker? Because you said you lived there uh, off and on, and that you had lived there for a stretch of time. How long? How much time were you the caretaker or the living? You know, kind of watching over the property. How long were you there? Just about a year. Yeah. A year. And you have yeah. all these stories from just a year. Oh, I know. But, I mean, I was there. I I mean, I'm an investigator myself, so um, I was there looking for it almost almost every day. I mean, some days are, it's really peaceful there mm-hmm. unless you're looking for stuff. But it's a beautiful, beautiful spot, too. Do, do you feel like that when you lived there and you went to investigate other locations that more happened to you in these other locations? Yeah, um, I would say like Trans Allegheny and Shanley, probably my top two. Mm. Um, Trans Allegheny is my bucket list. Tell me all about it. And oh Shan- Shanley, Shanley Hotel, that's my bucket list. Shanley is amazing. Amazing. Um, so Trans Allegheny, um, I went there with Josh and them. Uh, and it was just like nonstop, like. I was in the lobotomy area and I walked up, I was just setting up stuff and they weren't getting anything on the spare box. And I walked up to the spare box and I'm like, okay, if anybody had a lobotomy, say lobotomy. It's like lobotomy. I'm like, okay. And then, and then um, somebody asked like where I was from and it said Maine on the Maine. And I'm like, yep, I'm from Maine. And um, they just kept answering questions and then they would set off all the devices. And then we would actually, I actually heard a girl answer out loud in one of the rooms. Um, and, you could feel this cool breeze come in and I kept saying, I'm like, I feel like cold breeze and I keep, it's getting really cold and all, and uh, my friend Joe's like, hey, is, is somebody in here? And a girl's like, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> like out loud. Wow. And I was like, holy crap. Oh, like, like, like disembodied. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. oh shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. She's like, mm-hmm, come on in, baby. <laughs> yeah. And we would walk like down the halls and you hear like things going, <laughs> trying to get your attention. Like, Really? Like in, wow. In the room. <laughs> yeah. Shit, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, that place was, that was one place I didn't want to go by myself. Like, we thought we we're going to split up. And I'm like, I don't know. It's too intense. It was too intense for that. And it's a lot so of square footage. So when we go to Trans Allegheny, yeah. will you go with us, John, since you, you know, know the place and everything? Oh, God, yeah. That's Hell right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Now, you shouldn't make promises that you're not intending to keep because, see, this is being recorded. And I do hold okay. people to what they tell me on the air. <laughs> <laughs> she does. Beware. Be fucking where, dude. <laughs> no, Trans Allegheny. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. That would be sweet. So I just have to ask, because you said the Shanley. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I know we're oh talking, God, we're yeah. supposed to be talking about the Condrick House, but you brought up the Shanley. So the Shanley, if I remember correctly, it's in Napanock, New York. Is that correct? That sound right? Yeah. Napa, Napa. Yep. Yeah. Um, it, so I got to ask because I've heard this. Do they make you s- actually sign the waiver? I've heard they make you sign a waiver. The basis says we're not responsible of you getting hurt or even possible your death. Yeah. Conjure House does that too. I used to have to make people sign waivers. But, See, um, the pe- people, these are the places I want to go. <laughs> Dude, we make people sign a waiver before they come and hunt with us too. Yeah. But not something that says we're not yes, responsible for your death. No, it doesn't. 
it says we're not responsible for anything that the spirits do to you or happens to you while you're with us. Yeah, I guess that. I guess that's yeah. true. Yeah, we just don't say <laughs> your death. You know, we just kind of leave that vague. <laughs> you know. <laughs> If you happen to cross into the spirit world while you're hunting the spirits, please we're talk not to us and let us know what happened. <laughs> yeah. John, Come do you fill your own box. spirit boxes? Yeah, I do. Yep. I thought I, uh, you did. Yeah, I just started like a year ago. Um, and like nobody wants to tell you how to do it. Like it's some big, big secret. And I'm just like, I couldn't get anybody to show me. So. I tried doing it myself, tried doing it, and then this uh, uh, guy named Austin Maynard, I started talking to him, and we started. he just started work doing it too, and he was learning from Steve Holte, um, who learned from Frank Sumption, the original uh, box maker. So we were working together, trying to figure things out, and uh, eventually, uh, it took, took a while to learn. I mean, it's a lot to it. And, uh, Eventually, I learned from him. And he learned from Steve. Kind of passed it down, and now now I'm getting really good at it. Um, but yeah, I can make I can make just about anything. Spare you know, I'd like to put in an order for one that says everything vaguely paranormal. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> do, do Do you find? That and you I want you more... to sign it. Sign it, Magic Boy John. Magic Boy John. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Shit. With my OnlyFans address. With your OnlyFans address. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Hashtag Magic Boy. <laughs> yes. <right. laughs> Go ahead, Ryan. You probably should have never had question. Should have never had told us that story, John. <laughs> you never yeah. told us. That's okay. Do Do you find that you have to bear after that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Same, but do Do you find that you have more luck with? a spirit box that you built yourself versus one you just buy? Good question. Um, it's kind of like, like it's, you kind of have to like, it's weird to say, it's kind of like build a relationship with, for, for the box. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I, no, no, that makes sense. That, and that's totally not a porn reference, guys. Um, no, no. I, I, Although I, I did go there you. in my head. I was trying to behave that time. I would, I would agree with you because whenever we do uh, like an Estes method or something like that, I mean, me and Shelly are very adamant about, no, let me use mine. Cause I got a better connection with mine. Um, so we, we don't, we have our own setup for like Estes and stuff mm -hmm. because we feel more drawn to our own equipment. So yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah. I mean, like this last place we went to Norwich, um, asylum, we're going to there again this weekend, but, um, I, I, we weren't get, Joe, my friend Joe brought his spare box out. We weren't getting anything at all. And then I take out the one I made and all of a sudden it was just like answering everything. To talk. And yeah, just, I asked, I asked if I needed help to say help. And I swear to God, like 20 times, help, help me, help us, help, help. Like, oh my God. It was like, it was sad kind of. Just so much wow. Yeah. Through it, but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it never gets old, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for damn sure. It never you, gets old. John, do you do what's called the Estes Method? Have you ever participated in one of those? Yeah, I've done them quite a bit, yeah. Um, what do you think about is, those? Because... Well, when Corey and I used to do them, like, we did them on one of the live streams at the Condren House, and we would hook it up. I can't remember how we did it, but we'd hook it up so the viewers could hear what was coming through. Um and the person with the headphones couldn't hear, or whatever he had on, couldn't hear anything. Uh, I mean, they could just hear the radio coming through. They couldn't hear the person asking the questions. So that way, somebody can't just be making up whatever they're hearing. So everybody can. Mm -hmm. That's how we used to do it. So you would. Because I remember going to Lizzie Borden's house, and there was a girl doing SD, and she's laying on the floor where, where Lizzie Borden um, hacked, <laughs> hacked somebody out the floor. I don't know why I'm laughing, but. She would, um, she was saying all this like dirty shit, and I'm just like, there's no way it's saying <laughs> see this fair, but because you know, and like shows, they could easily manipulate that. They could, oh, god, yeah, like, oh, these are the questions I'm gonna ask. Nobody's gonna hear what's coming through, so I'm gonna answer whatever way, you know, whatever yeah, way we want, right? So. But it is an interesting sure because you're not, 
Go ahead. I talk. No, no, go ahead. I, I want to talk to you. They've heard me talk before. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've done SD method a lot. See, that's you. You say the spirit box is your favorite way to communicate. I ain't gonna lie. Shelly has to keep me from doing too many S's in one night because that's my favorite way to communicate. Because I just mm -hmm. feel like that's the easiest for me to be able to to get a very good connection with them. But at the same time, I'm I'm also one of those that I tend to go full fledged, one hundred percent open whenever I do it, and it can lead to yeah some pretty fun stuff that I've wonderfully experienced by doing yeah. too many in one night. <laughs> Being that yeah, oppressed exactly. feeling, ex experiencing other people's emotions and what we call getting jumped, stuff like that. Yeah, it's so Shelly's like, no, 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 you've done three. You're good. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird, though. I don't know how how I how I do it, though. It's so strange. Like I I have videos where I'm just like cooking breakfast and I'm like, hey, what am I what am I eating? Bacon. Oh, OK. What's this? Egg. What am I holding up now? Oh, an apple. Oh, OK. Like, wow. wow it's so weird guys if you have not seen weird. this he he has these posted and it, i mean he literally will just say hey can you tell me what this is and it will come through i'm going huh. how do i make mine where, do that <laughs> where so i guess you got to investigate your own house girl uh, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, dang it, I totally... Oh, yeah, where where can they go? So if any of our viewers want to watch it, where can they go watch it? Where do you have them posted at? Um, I have a U YouTube channel. Um, I post a lot of a lot of my spare box sessions on Facebook. Uh, so, and of course, Josh is born with Josh's channel. Uh, you can see me do spare box with him. That's probably why he hasn't come out with him. Because... What's, what, is, what is the YouTube channel? <laughs> um, just under John Huntington. Oh. Okay. It'll say Hauntington next to it. John Huntington, Hauntington. <laughs> <laughs> Such an easy transition for a cool name. Man. Right? Yeah. Huntington's like the perfect ghost <laughs> Yeah, for real. Because <laughs> we'll find it. We'll put a link to it on our page so that anybody that wants to go see these really awesome, cool spirit box sessions you do, they can go and see them. Or, you know, they can find you on Facebook and they can watch them there. Yeah, that too. Appreciate that. But yeah, don't nobody contact my boyfriend. He's mine. He's mine. <laughs> Your boyfriend. John's like, crap, I don't know how the hell I got a girlfriend out of this. Only thing <laughs> here would come. Oh, God. Finally, Finally I have a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do long distance I, relationships. <laughs> so I got a question for you about the Conjuring House. So for any of our viewers or listeners who are wanting and dying to go and for the three of us on the screen, because if I, I've got to go at some point, but is there any advice you would give to anybody who's planning on going to the conjuring house? Um, I would go in there uh, if you can with um, energetic, upbeat people. Uh, they seem to react way. Yeah. Like you guys <laughs> <laughs> go in there with energy. Um, and when you go in, just think that you're going to get something and expect that you're going to get something and be just be polite to whatever's in there. And usually they'll come through. You go in there and you're just like, oh, nothing's real. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen because I'm not going to do anything for you. So that's my advice when you go there. Um, if you, I know they don't let people in the barn anymore. I wish they would because that the barn was really active. I used to get a child in there all the time, and um, I'd have them, like, doing REM pod hits like crazy in there, EVPs, uh, but I think that's closed now. But if you can get in the barn, then go to the barn. If you can stand the bat shit, then there. Then go <laughs> <laughs> so, and speaking of that, in the time that you were there as caretaker or house sitter i don't know what to call you now uh, <laughs> um anyways as, as caretaker in the time you were there the year that we were there um we know in the documentary like they had they they took a like hand forged nail some dirt from the ground or like you know he one of them was brian was dif gifted a doll um did you get like a lot of mail sent back to the house like hey i, I took a pebble and and shit went I'm sideways when i got it. home <laughs> <laughs> so we had a 
a girl stole something out of the bathroom of the house. God. And she said things were happening. She wanted to bring it back. She admitted to stealing it. But I think it was just her trying to get back into the house. Mm. You know, after she stole something. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Guys, stop stealing shit from haunted locations. Don't Quit do it. that. This is why they're getting shut down. Stop it. <laughs> Damn. Quit taking shit that don't belong to you. <laughs> it, was fu- it was funny. One uh, one lady dropped her phone down in the well. Oh, no. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so the next day, Jen's like, crawls down inside the well to the bottom no. to get her phone, brings it back up, puts it in rice, and it's fine. <laughs> like the next no. day, it's fine. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know if I'd take that phone back. I'd be like, you know Mm-mm. what? Going to Verizon, getting a new one. Uh-uh. Nope. I'm done. The, the damn devil will show up on your screen when you get it back to the house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Damn. So is there is there much that is because uh, we know there's a well in the basement. I mean, it, it's mm-hmm. kind of well known, kind of all over the place. Is there do you think that there's a lot that's associated with that well in the basement that has to do with the hauntings? Um I've done a lot of spare box sessions uh, down that well, and every time I do, it mentions, I'm like, I ask where they are, and they will say, well, like, I have so many times, like, um, I'll be like, if you're here and you're dead, say dead, or say dead, and I'll say, where are you, and I'll say the well. I mean, I'm, at the time, I'm right next to the well, which could just be them saying the well, but. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think it has something to do with it because um, it's. I mean, we've had crazy. We've had to move balls a bunch of times. Down, you saw it in the documentary. Mm. They moved the football and stuff. Yeah, um, which was weird because they cut me out of that whole scene. Like in the scene, I'm, I'm in front of that ball and I'm walking out, and the ball flies off the chair and hits me in the back of the leg. And then everybody comes running in, but somehow they cut me completely. I don't know how they cut me completely out. <laughs> but, uh, do, do you well, feel like that the well is maybe a portal? Um, I've had several people say it is a portal, yeah. Um, okay. But I don't know. Well, we kind of have this. The, the reason why is we ask is because we kind of have this running theory. The, some of the places that we've been that involve a well – have been some of the most darkest and most haunted places that we've been to. And when we started making this kind of connection, you know, I mean, it goes all the way to like Bobby Mackey's and, you know, there's, there's Hill house Manor and Gainesville and, and other locations that have wells. And then we were like, Oh wait, yeah, there's a well in the Conjuring house. So whenever we were planning to talk to you, I was like, I'm asking mm-hmm. about the damn well to see if that is the connection. Cause I got to know for our research. <laughs> right. It definitely has something to do with it for sure. See, that's so damn interesting. That's so damn interesting. I have a theory that these properties that have these old ass deep wells just for some reason had this negativity on them, you know, or an oppressive spirit of some sorts. It's just well, weird. I mean, maybe it's because, you know, you're hitting moving water and it's acting as a battery and attracting stuff. So who knows? No. Could be. But damn, I feel bad for that lady who lost her phone in the well. Shit, I, I would not take that. Uh-uh. Nope, would not take that back. I'd be like, no, nope, I'm just going to go buy a new one. That one's trash. <laughs> you just answer the phone. Keep <laughs> <laughs> calling her every night. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my like God, John. You, you, six, six, six on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. John, it's been I enough time. You should do that now. It's been enough call time. Her. Do that now. Oh, call her. I call her. Have her number. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. That'd be bad. <laughs> Remember, it's always better if you give it a little time. Because <laughs> see, then they forget about it. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, well. But like, remember when you dropped the phone down the well? <laughs> like, I'm still here. <laughs> See, all you have to do is you have to got to figure out where they shipped it. This is the vindictive side of me. You got to figure out where they sh- uh, shipped it to. Get one of those little Annabelle dolls with a note attached that says, "You remember when you dropped your phone down the well and set it right on our front door?" Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's like, the evil, sadistic side of me. <laughs> I have to do that now. Yeah, John, do you ever want to prank somebody? We're your people. We, we, we are. We're a little nuts in a good way. I used to- I used to drive around with this uh, like devil, silver devil mask on. I was 
when I was doing the riding lawnmower mowing the lawn. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> people people are like, um, what do you call that mask? Like the plague doctor mask? I used to wear no, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The mail. <laughs> I got videos to, of to go get the mail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please tell me you had on your boxer shorts and your slippers with the plague master mat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's yeah. fucking gold. <laughs> Who else wants to be best friends with John right now? Because right now. <laughs> that's the kind of stupid shit I do if I lived in a, a haunted location. Like for real. Plague right. mat plague mass. <laughs> the, the funnest part was like chasing off the the trespassers like, hell well, yeah long video and <laughs> did, did, did you out. have a lot of that like a lot of trespassers trying to get on the property yeah like every day every day oh, i had damn. i had this one video where i just started doing a live stream and i was just like look at the cameras i'm like what the hell like this van pulls up and like eight kids get out of it with flashlights around their head and i'm like what is going on so I'm li- I like capture this live. I'm like walking out to the road, and they see my light, and they just start screaming, and they get back in the van. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, "The ghost man's coming! I see his lantern! Go, go, go!" <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> it was great. Those people with the headlamps always make me laugh because you're not sneaking up on anybody. <laughs> you dink. They know where you no. are and they know where your head is. If somebody was doing to take a pot shot at you, yep. they know right where to aim. Yep. Right? Turn Let's that shit off. Man, what was the I most didn't... creative way you ever scared somebody off, John? Because oh, I have an idea. You probably got creative to get rid of trespassers on occasion. Not really like... Um... If it was during the day, I wouldn't even care. I'd just be like, hey, you want to take some pictures or whatever, you know? I never really tried to scare scare them that much. Um, I know they scared me a few times. Like, I'd be, like, vacuuming in the house, and all of a sudden I see somebody run by the window, and I'm like, what the <laughs> And they, uh, they'd, be like, <laughs> Shit. they'd be like, hey, is this the Conjury house? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you know? <laughs> you should have looked down and said, yeah, can you see me? <laughs> yeah. That would have been a good one. That would have been a good one. <laughs> you can oh see God. me. You can see me. <laughs> I should have dressed in period clothing and just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, damn, I'm not gonna lie. That make me shit my pants if I if I. You're get you're getting out of the damn shower or something. You know, you're scrubbing your face off, and then you like pull the towel down, and there's somebody in the bedroom window like looking in for the conjuring. Uh, that would scare the <laughs> shit out of me. <laughs> you're like, you gotta pay for that. That's the all on the OnlyFans site, you asshole. <laughs> Oh, oh Jesus! <laughs> I keep forgetting that John's at work and that we're on like a speakerphone. We probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> John's no, I got my head- like, oh, There's you got here. smart and put in your headphones, good man. Yeah, <laughs> that was yeah. a wise move on your part. <laughs> That's probably why your camera went out. <laughs> probably, man. Are we making you do this on your lunch break? <laughs> Yeah, I basically skipped all my breaks to do this. So, oh um, my goodness! Shit. Well, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, you know. Fired. Yeah, we don't want you to get fired. We don't want you to get fired. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know. No, well, now is your break over? Because I want to talk to you for a few more minutes. We could talk a few more minutes. But this is way better than working. So, all right, hot dog, hot dog. Yeah, the boss. Both, ah. both my bosses and watch this. <laughs> oh, I love it! I hope your bosses do. It's just no. It's a it's a ser- it's a separate John Huntington. No, I mean he's yeah. not That's he's right. not on he's not on the screen. You can't prove it. <laughs> you can't prove it. Most people here don't know that I do this stuff either. Like really, like one picture like, does. I, think. I like how it's like all incognito. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like you know, I lived in one of the most haunted houses in America. You know, <laughs> the first day I worked here, though. I saw a guy guy with a farm on the round top, on the round top road hoodie. <laughs> oh, I was like, "Are you God. serious?" <laughs> so I'm That's like, funny. I asked the I asked the kid. I was like, "Did you go there?" He's like, "Oh yeah, it was really cool. I got a hoodie and stuff." I was like, "Shit, I lived there for a year and I never even got a hoodie." He's like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> for a year?" <laughs> so they don't your your friends at work don't know that you you investigate and do that kind of stuff. No, only a few. Only a few do. Man, everybody where I work knows what I do. <laughs> <laughs> me too. And they're always asking me about it, like, hey, you know, 
you went here this way. What'd you, what'd you see? Did you see something? Oh man. What, you know, and people are always asking me about ghost stories and everything else. I can't imagine, man. <laughs> so Shelly, ask your damn question. Cause He's on break. We got to. Which one? Which one? I don't know. You said you wanted to talk. You wanted got, to talk I to him. I got lots of notes. I like, wait a minute. I got lots, yeah. of, I got lots of questions. Let me find it. You see, I got, I got more. I just... Oh, God. She you was ready. She was, she was ready for her Oprah Winfrey extended interview. That's what it was. <laughs> I know. Was. Sometimes I go on and I think I'm going to say these things and then I totally don't say anything. Like... Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we missed so, everything. So, okay. I, now, I, I, I had this one totally as a joke, but you're such a good oh, sport. God. I'm going to I'm gonna ask it. We're, we're sorry, John. Go ahead, Shelly. Okay. <laughs> so, did you ever date, bring a date back to the Conjuring house? Oh, yeah. Like, so, so when I lived there, Corey and Jen kind of frowned on me having anybody there. Like, they'd have to sign. Like, if I had a date at the Conjuring house, I'd have to sign the fucking paper. And then, like, oh no! Oh, that sucks. But there's cameras everywhere, so I mean, <laughs> it was hard to date anybody there. Like, and and you couldn't like you couldn't trust them either because you were like, oh, they just want to go to the house and it'll be me. You know? Like, no, yeah. Uh, well, I so, mean, I bet it was a hell of a conversation starter. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I did. I had a I had a date there once, and we watched The Conjuring in The Conjuring House. Yeah. That's okay, cool. that's cool. That's kind of badass. Yeah, that was pretty good. That worked out well. So that was a good night. So hey, there you go. So here's my other question. <laughs> Being that there are cameras all over the place and people do stay there. You ever seen them getting freaky on those cameras where you watch it back <laughs> later? Damn it, Shelly. <laughs> I, so a lot He's of gonna times, answer me. I would, I would tell them while I'm giving the tour, I'd tell them, you know, if you don't want us to see you when you're sleeping you can turn the unhook the camera it's fine which is a big mistake because i would go there in the morning to clean and holy shit there'd be like butt stains on the bed like come <laughs> everywhere i'm just like what oh the my fuck God. happened in here i'm like i'm like Corey, you know this is you know it's, this is getting kind of gross like oh shit <laughs> oh my lord so damn <laughs> damn 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 people getting freaky in the conjuring house yeah, it was bad. I totally would. <laughs> right? Of course, of course, of course you would, Shelly. I know yeah, I Of course I would. <laughs> <laughs> See, John said he did. I did it everywhere in the house. I respect that. <laughs> Massive respect right there. And you know what? Y'all should have sold condoms. The review on Roland says I did it at the, con at the conjuring house. <laughs> the condoming? Oh, my God. <laughs> the condoming house, yeah. The, the condoming if I was still house. living there, I'd have so many great ideas. <laughs> I know. I'm trademarking that, don't I? Like, <sighs> to buy Welcome. that one since John. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the first TVMA EVP episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, child, we've had plenty of TVMA. Oh, actually, most of those are Patreon. Never mind. Oh, yeah, that's well, true. I tell yeah, you what, we true. know that John has got so many other things that he has to get back to that's far more important than us. But uh, I, I, hey, hey, John, let us go through our little end up here so we can properly say thank you to you. Um, and so, Blake, tell them everything they need to know. Absolutely. Whatever social media channel you are watching us on, we are not just on that social media channel. We are across the board. So make sure you go and follow us across the board. And big flash, big news. Um, the Lombie Museum tickets are on sale. So go get them while they're hot. I don't think we're sold out yet. But uh, it's probably going to be quick, though. <laughs> yeah. Probably going to be quick. So, Shelly, what else? And if you really want to know what we talk about, you go and become a Patreon member. It's $5 a month. And you will know everything that we know as soon as we know it. We don't do tears. It's not five, 10, 15. It's five dollars a month. You get everything. You can see what we are really talking about. Most of it's the stuff you heard tonight. Only we're less what's the word? Filtered. Uh, yes, less filtered. filtered. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So come and become a Patreon member. And Ryan, what else do they need to know? Yeah, we're less filtered. We're hand rolled on Patreon. So, <laughs> <laughs> so well, yeah. Um, yeah, it's like it, Go to any of the, sorry, I can't talk now. He's flustered. Any, any of the podcast platforms, please rate and review and please share us. Please tell two friends and have them tell two friends. And the more we get shared, the bigger we get, the more we can do for you guys. And if they have any questions about anything, Blake, what can they do? And they can send that to the evppod at gmail.com. That's T-H-E-E-V-P-P-O-D at gmail.com. 
Like, share, and subscribe. So uh, for me, I'm Shelly Pruitt. My partners in Paranormal, Mr. Blake Smith and Mr. Ryan Roberts, we would like to extend a very genuine and heartfelt thank you to Mr. John Huntington, the magic boy and former caretaker of The Conjuring House. <laughs> we have had so much fun with you, John. Thank you so much for being on with us. Yes, And thank you. Uh, we appreciate you being on Everything Vaguely Paranormal, and we will see you next Tuesday. Bye, you guys. See you next